Gromit, I uh, must stop eating cheese last thing. It's given me terrible dreams. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Uh, last night, I dreamt I'd accidentally become engaged to our neighbor, Miss Flit. Oh, oh, oh. Can you imagine? What's this? Oh, no, lad. So it wasn't a bad dream after all. It's a real life flipping nightmare. It's all coming back to me. At the fair, I found that lug nut and she thought it was a... Oh my kitty aunt. Talk about matrimonial misunderstandings. You've got to do something, Gromit. No. I've got to do something. I must go and speak to Miss Flit at once. I apologize and explain it was all a terrible mistake. I'm sure Miss Flit will understand. She'll probably be relieved when she learns I wasn't proposing marriage after all. It's not as if we've much in common. <laughs> well, I suppose there's nothing for it but to, uh... Oh, Major Crumb. Yes? Ah, morning, Wallace. I've come about a professional matter of the utmost delicacy and secrecy. You have? Oh, wonderful. Uh, step into my consulting room and tell me all about it. Seems I'm going to be tied up for a while, Gromit. Uh, on business, uh, why don't you go and put your ear to the ground and find out how the land lies next door? Great Aunt Prudence, you came so quickly. Of course, Felicity. An urgent summons from one's only living relative and heir to one's fortune can mean only one thing. Man trouble. Now, who is the blighter this time? I'll box his ears if he's been toying with your affections. Oh, no, no trouble as such, Aunt Prudence. But, well... There has been an important development on the matrimonial front, which... Pardon me, Aunt Prudence. I think I spy an ugly little intruder. I positively love fungi. Come, let's go inside for a cup of tea. Have you come, my old child? Man trouble always makes me hackles rise and my petticoats fluster. For a start, could you tell me what the object is? Yes, of course. It's... it's... Oh, fiddlesticks, I've forgotten. Oh. Gone. Clean out of my mind. Hmm. Well, uh, that's a poser. An imposter? Where? Uh, no, I mean it's a problem because we... Out with it, man! Spit it out! Oh, well, although we at Golden Retrieval believe the customer is always right, we may find it a little tricky to, uh, uh, um, retrieve your lost item if you can't identify what it is. I didn't say I can't identify it. Uh, you didn't? No, 
Oh, that'd be idiotic. Do I look like an idiot? Um... I can identify the object perfectly well. Oh, oh, excellent. And I shall identify it as soon as you fellas find it and bring it to me. It's not going to be an easy job. No, it isn't. It's going to be deuced difficult. That's why my colleagues and I are turning to you. We only work with the best. Oh, uh, uh, well, very kind of you to say so. But I won't stand for any monkey business. If you don't bring me the genuine article, I'll know in an instant. Uh, know what? That's what I need you to find out. You and that bloodhound of yours. You're detectives, aren't you? Registered and certified. Then you're precisely the men I need for the job. And I hope we can be of service. Oh, you can, you can. But you need to be discreet. Tread softly. Ears peeled. Eyes open. Don't let critical intelligence fall into the wrong hands. Oh, uh, others are looking for this, uh, object? Oh, yes. Always others, Wallace. Enemy agents, spies, saboteurs, spoil spots, fifth columnists, quizzling interlopers. Really? Managed to frustrate them all so far. No one can squeeze intelligence out of crumb. Uh, uh, no. And if they put the thumbscrews on you, Wallace, Oh, uh, Gromit and I would never divulge your professional secret. Good man! Now, have you got all you need to get started? Uh, not quite everything. Dash it, what more can I tell you? This object you've lost. Lost something? Who has? Ah, yes, I've just remembered. Oh, you have. Yes, something that means a great deal to me. Uh, go on. Not just me, but to all of us. It's terribly important. It is? This is a matter of the utmost importance, Wallace, or I wouldn't have come. I appreciate your faith in my skills, Major. Faith has nothing to do with it. Facts are what we need, man. Cold, hard facts. Of course. So, uh, uh what have you lost? An object, precisely. Uh, can you be more specific? I certainly can. How specific would you like me to be? Well, uh, we at Golden Retrieval always like to know what it is we're looking for. For a start, could you tell me what the object is? Yes, of course. It's... By the way, Major, uh, what do you think of me new painting? Why, it's very... By George, it's a masterpiece! Hmm, well, uh, that's a poser. An imposter? If there's any information gathering to be done, my eavesdropper is just the tool for it. Eavesdropper? I like the sound of it. Although we at Golden Retrieval believe the customer is always right, we may... Sniper fire! Merely porridge, Major Crumb. Carry on. Gromit, please. I can identify the object perfectly well. Oh, excellent. And I shall identify it as soon as you fellas find it and bring it to me. It's not going to be an easy job. No, it isn't. It's going to be deuced difficult. In his spare time, he likes to tinker a little. Tinker? Yes, um, inventions and such like. A handyman? Well, you'll obviously have to put a stop to the inventing. Certainly not in the house. Can't be tolerated. Oh, oh no. Far too messy and intrusive. Hmm. Well, I think you've told me all I need to hear. And so, 
so long as he doesn't leave his contraptions lying around all over the house, he sounds a very suitable suitor. So our engagement has your blessing? I don't see why not. Unless... Yes? Unless, of course... Well, he's not... He's not a member of that... that place, is he? That appalling country club whose name alone makes me shudder. You mean Prickly Thicket? Oh, yes. Oh, heavens, child, you know our family history. We flits have never associated with those dreadful Prickly Thicketers. Oh, you needn't worry, Aunt Prudence. Wallace isn't the Prickly Thicket type. Being next door neighbours means the parlour will be twice as large once we knock the wall down, and I'll be able to do all my repotting in the cellar. I thought you said he did his inventing in the cellar. Not for much longer. I'll soon get him started on another hobby. I was thinking geraniums. So long as it's not golf, you'll have my blessing. Oh, Aunt Prudence. Wallace really isn't the outdoorsy type. There's no chance of him joining that country club and becoming a prickly thicketer. I should hope not. No relative of mine will ever marry a prickly thicket man. Not while I have breath in my body. More chamomile? I must say, Aunt Prudence, I still don't understand your antipathy towards prickly thicket. You don't need to understand it, my girl. Just accept it. We flits have felt antipathy towards prickly thicketers for generations. Well, far be it from me to break a family tradition. Don't be flippant, Felicity. If I discover your intended is a... Oh, you needn't worry on that score. There's no possibility that Wallace is a member of Prickly Thicket. Believe me. And this Wallace of yours... You're quite sure he's entirely unconnected to that horrible club? Quite sure, Aunt Prudence. Wallace couldn't possibly be a member of Prickly Thicket. Morning, Mr. Paneer. Constable Dibbins. Delivering the mail as well this morning? Aye, Posty's off sick. He's got the mumps and I've got the ump. Sorry to hear that. Her Majesty's mail must be delivered. And PC Ernest Dibbins has never shrunk from duty, even when such duties aren't even part of his blinking job description. Here's your post. Ah, couldn't help but notice the coat of arms, Mr. Paneer. A prickly thicket, isn't it? Happen. So, you remember then? Hmm? Oh, aye, aye. Practically me second home. Is it now? That's a very interesting coincidence. I was just saying to myself the other day, Ernest Dibbins, it's time you joined a... Oh, my! Excuse me, Constable. What are you staring at? Get along now. Back off. Caught him trying to nick your letter. The important one from ahem, Prickly Thicket. Oh, that's only the envelope. I've got the letter here. Not bad news, I trust. Oh no, quite the reverse. It's my turn to propose a new member. Is it really? Well, I never. It's a heavy responsibility. Not everyone's cut out to be a Prickly Thicketer. The candidate must be a gentleman of impeccable character. Someone who's always there for a friend in need. A pillar of the community. And, of course, a sportsman. Going to be a long search? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, the ideal candidate might be, uh, somebody who's very close to you. Oh? Aye, somebody who's right in front of your nose, in fact. Ah, yes, of course. 
You mean Mr. Wallace, my near neighbor and one of my best customers. Wallace? He's no blinking sportsman. He don't know one end of a golf club from the other. Well, that's true. And he's hardly a pillar of the community. Like... Like who? Mr. Paneer. My dear Mr. Paneer. Who watches over this town centre like a shepherd watches his flock? Who sees to it that everybody stays on the straight and narrow? Oh, you mean you? <laughs> but don't forget, you forgot to find me after that business with the bad bangers last month. Only on account of me soft heart. It's me only failing. But don't start getting ideas. I'll let you off with a warning once, but just once. Of course, Constable. Now, you better start getting these crates put away. They're blocking a public thoroughfare. Oh dear, not more crates. Good day, Mr. Paneer. I'll leave you to uh, think things out. Out of me way, you. Hey, up, Gromit. Where do you come from? I weren't really thinking straight when I said your master might be prickly thicket material. He's a right good bloke, your Wallace. But, like the PC says, if he's a sportsman, I'm a banana. Oh, thought maybe it was the constable come back. Good old PC Dibbins. You know, he never issued me a fight. Not even when me mothball display collapsed and buried poor Mrs. Enfistle. That's the sort of fella you want to keep on side. Me mind's made up, uh, I think. Can you imagine your Wallace on a golf course? <laughs> he wouldn't know his mashie from his niblick. A niblick? It's a golf club. Like a brassy. Or is it a baffy? Or a biffy? Yes, indeed. We're lucky to have an officer like Dibbins on our beat. The sort of Bobby what looks out for the small businessmen. Who ain't too quick to slap a fine on him for every minor health and safety violation. That's the sort of bloke a fellow wants in his club. You know I like your master, Gromit, but, well, in this town, Dibbins is the sort who can make things happen for me. Wallace is more the sort who makes them happen to me. You get the distinction? Yes, I'm going to propose Dibbins for membership of Prickly Thicket. He's always gone in to bat for me, and I should do the same for him. It's decided then, and don't try and persuade me out of it. Wallace may be a gentleman and a scholar, but he ain't no sportsman. Order of the law, and all on account of a teeny tiny mouse. Oof, ridiculous, really. But you know, Constable Dibbins, he'll let a lot of things go, but he's a stickler when it comes to vermin. Eee, it's good to have youngins about flat again. And Mr. Muzzle seemed like such a nice man. Who ever would have thought he'd turn out a reap villain? Ooh, it's all over tip papers this morning. How Monty Muzzle's fundraising funfair was a big fake, and how a certain ice cream vendor and his dog brung him to justice. And I couldn't help noticing that little item in the society section. The one about your master and Miss Flit. It's true then. Been keeping it a secret though, sly devils. You be sure and give Wallace my felicitations, the sly devil. <laughs> Uh, 
No, it's you. Looking for a policeman or a postman? I'm doing double duty. No letters for you today. Hey, you're the mutt what's responsible for my incarceration, aren't you? No hard feelings, mate. Come here. I've got a little present for you. Pleasant accommodations, so far as jail cells go. Pillows could be a bit plumper, but uh, I ain't complaining. Anyway, my lawyers are on the case. You ought to be out in a fortnight at the latest. Oh, you again, eh? C come closer, will you? Can you fetch a chisel for me? I'll, <laughs> I'll give you a treat. Hey, you're the mutt what's responsible for my incarceration, aren't you? No hard feelings, mate. Come here. I've got a little present for you. with that. It's my last one, and it's reserved for Mr. Paneer. Yes, I've just remembered. No answers yet in the, uh, flit case, Gromit. You may want to use some of my equipment. That's right. Put the thumbscrews on her. This is a matter of the utmost importance, Wallace, or I wouldn't have come. I appreciate your faith in my skills, Major. Faith has nothing to do with it. Facts are what we need, man. Cold, hard facts. Of course. So, uh, uh what have you... Constable Dibbons seems to be taking quite an interest in you this morning. Oh, yes. We're great chums, we are. He does me little favours, and I do the same for him. Is that so? Have you got my, uh... Here. Extreme pudding. Been looking forward to this issue. There's supposed to be an in-depth feature on the merits of natural rubber grips versus synthetic. Hello? What's this? Thinking, Nora. Is that who I think it is? Well, I'll be. That's our Wallace, that is. Rookie of the Year. I didn't even know he played golf. Oh, he's a man of mystery and no mistake. The constable was just saying what a rotten sportsman Wallace is. Who will be eating his words when he sees that? Yes. What you thinking, Pat? Oh, nothing. The constable's still the best choice. After all, he's been very good to me. Mm, must be nice to have friends in high places. Don't suppose you could use a few crates of super sticky nut butter, can you? I ordered five tubs, but the daft apron at that warehouse put me down for 500. How am I supposed to shift 500 tubs of super sticky nut butter? Wait a minute. Take this home to your master. Free sample, courtesy of Paneer's produce. 
If you don't like it, you can always use it to fill in cracks before decorating. Can't really leave these crates in the street all day. Ah, my good friend Panea. Glad to see you're doing your civic duty. Oh, yes. <laughs> I wouldn't want to presume on our friendship. That's why I've always respected you, Mr. Panea. Never want to take advantage of powerful friends. You know, when push comes to shove, the law must be obeyed. Honor, duty, and golf. That's the prickly thicket motto. And a fine motto it is. A motto I could easily live by if, say, someone were to invite me to join the club. Say no more, Constable. I thought it over and... Pinky neck! Crikey! What kind of trick is this? Trick? Uh, no trick. Just a little mix-up. Optical illusion. If you'll just turn the other way for a moment, I'll... Turn the other way? I am an officer of the law, Mr. Panea. But our friendship? I'm sorry, Mr. Panea, but vermin's vermin. And vermin trumps friendship every time. So, that's how it's going to be, is it? Constable Dibbins, this is a pleasant surprise. Uh, what brings you to, uh... Here. Package for ya. What do you suppose this is about? It's from Prickly Thicket. Well, I never. They're inviting me to become a member. And they've even enclosed the club's official tank top. Imagine that, lad. A country club. Ho oh, ho. Oh, uh, we're going up in the world, eh, Gromit? Miss Flit. Please, Wallace, you needn't be so formal. Not after yesterday. Call me Felicity. Uh, yes. Uh, about yesterday. I did leave you hanging in suspense, rather, didn't I? <laughs> Not in me. But I do have an answer for you now. Uh, you, you, you do? I couldn't take a step of this magnitude without first consulting my great aunt Prudence. And you'll be delighted to know she has given us her blessing. Isn't that wonderful? Her only caveat. <laughs> and it's almost too ridiculous to mention <laughs> is that she forbids us to marry if <laughs> if you're a member of <laughs> we, re we reject the sticky bigot that's a ball of cursed cricket. We tell other sports to stick it. Golf for us is just the ticket. Hurrah! Hurrah for Prickly Thicket! Brother Wallace is duly sworn in in co conformance with Prickly Protocol. Devil if I care why it had to be Wallace, but what's done's done. Welcome to the club, Wallace. We await the opening whack. Swing the club, you tube! Oh, 
I'm so here. Here. I'm still in here. I'm still in here. <laughs> Stop in the name of the law! I hereby announce that in violation of Municipal Bylaw Number 486, as relating to sports and social clubs, use of, this club is to be closed forthwith. My law state, and I quote, Every registered golf and country club must be in possession of no fewer than one fully functioning golf course. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. by law. Uh, by law. Pardon if I'm a bit, uh, shaky on the upswing, but are you saying that uh, we don't actually have a golf course? Not at the moment, anyway. Had one once. Dashed fine one it was, too. Uh, but uh, the deed was lost. Somewhere within the walls of this club. Some little time ago. 1649? Rotten year. It's a long and terrible story. It's history. And as of tomorrow morning, prickly thicket will be history, too. Enjoy your last day at the club, gentlemen. Well, that's only one thing for it, I reckon. Like the booby booby said, let's enjoy our last day at the club. Capital idea. Perhaps I can get a game of chess in before... I kicking. still need to work on me cushion technique. Uh, uh, pardon me, but... But PC Dibbins is going to shut Prickly Thicket Golf Club because it hasn't got a golf course. Oh, that's a good cheek. And it hasn't got a golf course because the deed proving its existence is lost. Yeah, indeed. Right, that's well right. then, there's nothing for it but to find the deed. Easier said than done, buddy. Wrigley Thicketers have been searching for centuries. Impossible quest, Wallace. Impossibilities are our speciality at Golden Retrieval. Of course! Now I remember! That's what I hired you fellows to find! The deed to Prickly Thicket Golf Course! Me clue finder ought to come in handy for finding clues. Hmm. Automatic golf ball cleaner. I'm still missing a clue or two. Eureka! A clue! The golden key shall only be obtained by him who earned it. The golfer who, without a clue, took up the game and learned it. To hook and slice is never nice unless ye have direction. A book depicts, in stages six, the order of perfection. Aha! I've got it now! You have? Rook to pawn three! There's bound to be a clue nearby. What's this? Behold the foolish puppy dog. He keepeth very busy. He seeketh for the silver key, and spinneth till he's dizzy. The hours pass, he stoppeth not, in daytime nor in nighttime. Methinks he'll findeth not his prize, until you see the right time. Lincoln, Nora, this is a riddle and no mistake. Poor, call that poetry, Wallace. I think it's a clue, Major Crumb. If I could just round up all the clues in the vicinity, I could begin to unravel this mystery. I can't make a proper start on this job till I found all the clues. Right over there. Eh? Oh. Oh, no, I didn't say cues, I said, oh, 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 no matter, you carry on. I can't make a proper start on this job till I found all the clues. Could this be a clue? 
Only the man who has mastered the Ganges and made the impossible shot is worthy to pocket the porcelain key that will slide in the porcelain slot. As to the Ganges? Does that mean the river? Or could it mean... Could it mean... What? Nothing. Just a silly superstition. Can you help me decipher this clue, Mr. Paneer? Only the man who has mastered the Ganges... Shh! It's a story I first heard at my grandmother's knee about a secret golf grip that men have devoted their lives to discovering. Oh, that's all stuff and nonsense. The Ganges grip is an old wives' tale and nothing more. About this Ganges grip, Mr. Paneer, I don't suppose you'd be able to demonstrate. You got the wrong fella, Mr. Wallace. It's a closely guarded secret, they say. Oh, it's a load of old free. If you listen to him, Wallace, you'll be snookered from the start. Tee hee time, everybody. Time for a joke. I say, I say, I say. I'm wearing my lucky golf socks today. Lucky golf socks? What the devil are lucky golf socks? The pair with a hole in one. A sock We a hole in one! <laughs> Tee hee time, everybody. Time for a joke. Uh, fella invites his new neighbor to join him for a round of golf. Neighbors never played golf before. Oh, yes. Awful decent. Very public spirited. Everything's fine till they get to the seventh hole when the neighbor hits his ball into the bunker. He wax it and wax it, but can't get it out of the sand. You're not using the right club, says his friend. I haven't got it anymore, says the neighbor. Hasn't got it? Why in heaven's name not? Because you told me to eat me sandwich before we came out. Eat me sandwich! <laughs> Time, everybody. Time for a joke. I say, I say, I say. Golfer says to his caddy, I'd move heaven and earth to break a hundred on this course. And the caddy replies, Try heaven. You've already moved most of the earth. Rather amusing, that one. <laughs> You've already moved most of the earth! <laughs> oh, ho, 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 time, everybody. Time for a joke. I say, I say, I say. Fella takes forever at his tea, waggling his club and taking practice shot after practice shot. What's the matter with the fellow? Hit the blasted ball! That's what his golf buddy says. You see, the fella explains, me wife's watching me from the clubhouse, and I want to make this a perfect shot. And the friend says, forget it, man. You'll never hit her from here. <laughs> You'll never hit her from here! <laughs> <laughs> Tee hee time, everybody. Time for a joke.
I say, I say, I say. When I miss a short pot, I don't let it get to me. I just look around, think what a lovely day it is and how lucky I am to have me health. Then I take a deep breath. Very sensible reaction, but why the deep breath? Gives me strength to break the putter. <laughs> Gives me strength to break the putter. <laughs> Careful with that book, it's our greatest treasure. The golfer's path to perfection. Aye, our first chairman spent his whole life devising this system. But now, it's lost to history. All that remains of the path is the sixth and final step. Quite an honor, Mr. McBiscuit being elected chairman, I mean. Oh, honor has nothing to do with it. We don't hold elections for the chairmanship here, Wallace. We play for it, like men in the chairman's tournament. Oh, and how long has Duncan held the seat? Ever since he won the chairman's tournament. Call yourself a detective, you're not paying attention, Wallace. Major Crumb, you've no wish to see Prickly Thicket closed down. Heaven forbid! So perhaps you could help me recover the deed? Helping others? Out of the question. Against club rules. What? Tea time already? So it is, so it is. Thank you, my good man. Here's something for your efforts. Clever workmanship. That there's a brass butler. Built by Goodman Witless in 1648. I say, that face looks familiar. Gonna see how? Unless you were round about these parts 400 years ago. That there dusty old dowager is Duchess Flit. Her family owned much of the land hereabouts in those days. And that chappy sneaking out the back that were my great, 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 great grandpa, Lord Rory McBiscuit, come down for his holidays and missed the last coach back to Scotland. I do see a slight resemblance. Aye, he were a bonny lad, and a great one with the lassies. The Duchess couldn't get her fill of him, but as you can see, he cared for nubbit mucking about in a golf course. Twas Grandpa Rory who built Prickly Thicket. And uh, what did Duchess Flint have to say about that? Oh, threw her in a right rage it did. Had our men seize the course by force. Aye, and that's when our troubles began. I say, that one's a Roman. Aye, that one were Goodman Wellis. Him and his evil hellhound Gimblet. A ah, pox on the pair of them. It's them for purse in the predicament we're in today. Really? Aye, for when the devilish Duchess Flit were seizing the golf course and planting flowers on it, 
My poor Grandpa Rory were desperate. He loved his prickly thicket golf course like a wee wifey. But he couldn't save it from Flitz men and their terrible tulip bulbs. So when they snatched the course from him, robbed him, they did. He hid the deeds to the land, hoping one day to reclaim it and restore it to the noble cause of golf. And that were his biggest mistake. Hiring them two buffoons to help. You mean Goodman Whitless? Aye, and Gimlet is devil help. Local cloakmakers and jacks of all trades they were. Grandpa Rory hired them to build a security system to protect the deed. Well, they built it all right. And made a dashed fine job of it, too. Brilliant. Inspired. Flitz men did their damnedest, but they couldn't disable the system. And nor could anyone else, including Goodman Witless. Thanks to him, the deeds are still locked away in the walls here somewhere, guarded by his tick-tock state-of-the-art security system. Well, uh, I've done a bit of tinkering myself with security systems. Uh, do you know how this one works? Not a flippin' clue. You need three keys to switch it off, that's all I can. A gold one, a silver one, and a porcelain one. And these keys, uh, where are they to be found? Search me, pal. They're well hid, too. Got security systems of their own, they say. The Complete Gomeril's Guide to Golf. My Grandpa Rory were a great one for self-improvement. Hmm. Oh, ball in the rough, eh? Aye. Oh. Uh, Grandpa Rory had his share of heartaches. What do you think of that, eh? Oh, lucky shot. Lucky? That were my biscuit magic, that were. Quite a talker, eh? Grandpa Rory knew how to tell a tale, so they say. Oh, I, I think the pressure was getting to him. Hmm. Aye. That were Grandpa Rory's darkest hour. Oh, the prickly thicket anthem always brings a tear to me eye. Either that clock's wrong or I am. Hmm. Springs could do with a bit of tensioning. Nonsense. Clock's on thicket time, that's all. Eight o'clock? Oh, of course. Silly of me. Time, everybody. Time for a joke. I say, I say, I say. Did you hear the one about... <laughs> clock seems slightly cuckoo. Hmm. Now then, I wonder... Crivens! He oh, has found it! He's found it! It's a silver key!
looks like a match. Count of vermin. Dear me, I did so like that cheese rabbit. Though, so come to think of it, uh, it did seem a bit chewed around the edges last time I had it here. Make out what you're saying. <laughs> the missus had some of that Mr. Paneer's fancy nut butter. Now she can't open a gob. Oh dear. Sticky situation that. Ha <laughs> I know. Wonder if he's got any more. <laughs> Well, if it ain't the blinking hero, what caught the bad old dog napper? <laughs> Monty Muzzle. How's the ice cream business treating you, mate? <laughs> this is a clear case of wrongful imprisonment. What did I do to deserve this? You kidnapped my dog, for starters. Oh, that. Well, merely a misunderstanding. How do, Wallace? How goes your first and last day at your new club? Couldn't you see fit to spare prickly thicket, Constable Dibbins? Quite devoted to the place, ain't you? Considering you only got sworn in this morning? It's only that, uh, well, the club has such a long history and, uh... Hi! An history of decline and fall and blatant discrimination when it comes to new members. I beg your pardon? They don't know what they missed out on. Passing over a crack golfer like me. I could have put Prickly Thicket back on map. I could have showed them that... Showed them what? It wouldn't mean anything to you, Wallace, but plenty of clubs are killed to have a member who knows the... the Ganges grip. A master of the Ganges grip, eh? Oh, you've got hidden depths, Constable. That I have. And seems how nobody seems to appreciate him, my depths are gonna stay hidden. Imagine a master of the secret Ganges grip right here in town. That's right. And I ain't going to give up that secret to no prickly thicketer. Closed on account of vermin. It's a regular plague. Oh, poor Mr. Paneer. Take tea today, lad. Prickly thickets on a bit of a sticky wicket. And only golden retrieval can save the day. Grab our detection kit and let's... What's up, Chuck? Uh, uh, good afternoon, ladies. Uh, is there anything I can do for you? <laughs> Wallace! Oh, um, um, oh dear me. My grandniece is a tender-hearted girl, Mr. Wallace. She hates to see a man ruin his life. 
I don't believe I've had the pleasure, Mrs. Uh... It's Miss Flit, actually. And I make it a rule never to shake hands with individuals who belong to certain organizations. <gasps> Golf is a barbaric practice, Mr. Mullis. Those caught in its snares inevitably descend into squalor, destitution, and madness. It's all there in this little booklet. Save yourself, Wallace! I appreciate your concern, Miss Flint, but really, I... <laughs> My grandniece's condition is far too delicate to engage in conversations with madmen. Kindly direct your ravings to me. <laughs> oh, that stamp's not been franked. I'll just... Attend to your guests, Mr. Wallace. <laughs> Beg pardon, madam, but regarding the, uh, charges you've brought against me, I mean to say, is that a fair way to treat a fellow? A bit rough, if you ask me. Fair way? Rough? <laughs> you see, Felicity, this is what golf does to the mind. The man is obsessed. Uh, uh, perhaps we should discuss the situation calmly over a nice copper, eh? I'll just put her into the kitchen and get some tea off the shelf. Put her? Tea off. <laughs> He's been brainwashed, Felicity. We may be too late. I don't mean to drive you off, but I've got to get along. A long drive off? <laughs> it's hopeless. Uh, Miss Flint, I... Please, Mr. Wallace, kindly keep your obsessive golfisms to yourself. I don't think my grandniece's nerves can stand any more. <laughs> a glass of milk? Makes a change for the sort of tipple you imbibe at your club, I'll venture. Very good. Drink your milk. At least that's a wholesome activity. Oh, do you think it will restore his senses, our prudence? It's always hope. Painter was passing through town on the way to Bristol. Not a bad likeness, eh? <laughs> always handy to have a spanner to hand. I've enjoyed our little chat, Miss Flit. Oh, and a great pleasure meeting you, Miss Flit. Uh, but, uh, Mustache? Please, try to turn your life around, Wallace. Uh, awfully pressed for time, Gromit. <laughs> Would you mind attending to our guests? <laughs> Have a clean handkerchief, please.
Shouldn't you be sipping cocktails at this hour with all your new friends at the club, Wallace? As a crack golfer, Constable Dibbins, perhaps you could give me a pointer or two. I'm still a bit new to the game and... Uh... Here, give me that. You're holding it all wrong. You've got to... Ah, I see. Very clever. <laughs> uh, clever? Think you can trick an officer of the law into divulging the Ganges grip, do you? Um... Well, since your club's about to close, I'll show you anyway. Now watch closely. There you are. Got that? Here you are, Mrs. Gabberly. This ought to do the trick. Oh, I can talk again. Now look what you've done, Wallace. And I'll have a few choice words for you tonight. I wonder, Mrs. Gabberly, uh, would you mind awfully if I uh, dip the handle of my golf club into your sticky nut butter? If it'll help you with your detective work, help yourself. I want nothing more to do with the stuff. Much obliged. Mouth in working order again, is it, Mrs. Gabberly? Oh, it is. Nasty business, that. Ooh, thought I'd never speak again. Aye, it were an impossible dream. While it lasted. Wait till he gets his nut butter stew tonight. No ill effects from the nut butter, then? No, thank heavens. My jaw's in perfect working order again. Take blinking super glue to keep that thing shut. Twitch, how are you getting along, old boy? Eating us out of house and home he is. Now then, about the Ganges grip, I was wondering... You're holding the blinking club upside down. Give me that. The trick is to... Hey, think you can steal me secrets, do you? All right, take a gander at this. There now. Catch that, did you? Oh. What trick are you trying to pull, Wallace? Take your pigging club and bug off, Wallace. I haven't got time for all your sh shenanigans. Must you oblige, Constable. Off. Oh, who am I going to humiliate today? Wallace, now is it? Is that the best we can do for a challenger? No. Watch how it's done, laddie. Your turn, Wallace, unless you want to throw in the towel. Pack a club. It's your turn, so take a shot. 
You can swing from the laddie's tea right there, or the lassie's tea down there. For you, I'd recommend the lassie's tea. Do it, you ask? Talent. Sheer talent. Not really crickets to make you keep playing, Wallace, but if you're set on it, there are the clubs. Wouldn't be my club now, would it? I'll hold the pose a while in case anyone's of a mind to take a wee picture. Your turn, Wallace. Or did you want to give up? to tee off. Now, oh, who am I gonna humiliate today? Wallace, now, is it? Is that the best we can do for a challenger? No. Watch how it's done, laddie. Looks effortless, I know. And to tell the truth, it is effortless. <laughs> now for the comic relief. How many strokes you reckon it'll take him to get off the tea? Show us your best, Wallace.
See that? By heck, the chairman's missed his shot. No, I never. That were the rubbish club what missed it. Well, your turn. Pick a club. Here comes the fiend of the fairway. Gonna swing from the big boys, D, this time, are you, Wallace? He did it again. He missed another shot. Um, something's not right. What's going on? All right then. Which club are you going to use? Stand back, everyone. The pro's going to show us how it's done. Step up to the D, Wallace. Wallace sunk the ball. No, he never. Uh, it's a trick. He... Uh... Crevens. Crikey. Oh. The golden it's key. No, the, the golden key. key. Crikey O'Reilly, this is most irregular. Oh, <gasps> the Ganges grip. I told you, Paneer, there's no such... <gasps> By heavens, he's crossed some key. Not about a hole in one. Porcelain key that will slide in the porcelain slot. It's the deed. Hmm. Well. It appears to be genuine. So you see, PC Plod, Prickly Thicket has a wee golf course after all. I see. And where is this land exactly? Well... If you can't even establish that, gentlemen, I don't see how... Gangway! Gangway! Used to be in reconnaissance, don't you know? Dab hand at topography. Let me see now. Bit of a rise to the north, river bisecting the eleventh fairway, grove of oaks to the west. Interesting. What, what, is, it? what is it? Naturally, some of the landmarks have disappeared in the intervening years, but if my guess is correct, the eighteenth tree is located precisely on the spot of ground now known as. 62 West Wallaby Street. Well, I'll be. And it's not just my house that's in danger. If Chairman McBiscuit gets his way, the golf course will end up covering most of the... But I'm still jiggered if I understand why you're playing golf through the middle of town. 
If I win the chairman's tournament, I'll be named chairman of Brickley Thicket, Mrs. Gabberley. It's only the club chairman who can call off the wrecking ball. Why is the chairman's tournament got to be played here? Well, as the deeds show, Mrs. G, we're standing on the site of the original Prickly Thicket golf course. You see, it's all very logical if you have stopped to think about it. And Chairman McBiscuit sinks his spot, moving him to 20 under par. But let's face it, Pat. You haven't a prayer. Oh, I'm not chucking in the trilby just yet. I've still two holes to play, remember? And I've got one clear advantage. The greatest helper a golfer ever had. Me remote activated auto caddy. Watch this. Uh, 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 hey, Gromit, how do you like to man the controls for a while, eh? Huh? <laughs> Get away with ya! Give up new while you're still behind. Have you not been humiliated enough? Not by half. Uh, which way to the next tee? Well, let's make things interesting at least. Two holes left to play. The wee short hole starts here. And it ends... Oh, right over there. What a shot. All in one for German McBiscuit. He's on fire today, ladies and gentlemen. Now he swaggers to the 18th tee. The long hole starts right here. And it ends... Oh, by a for the Bobby Dazzler. Clean out of sight. Hey, Vanilla. Where's it going to come down then? Let me see now. The 18th hole. Uh, yes, that would be uh, 62 West Wallaby Street. Oh, yeah. Now, you can play the two holes in either order. Play them both at the same time if you like. First man to finish the pair of them wins the tournament. What do you say? I say. Uh, mm, that's a very sporting offer. I accept. Right then. Afraid I haven't got time to hang around here and watch you muff your shorts. I've a victory party to get to. You'd best follow me back to the 18th green, Paneer. You'll not want to miss commentating on my match-winning putt. Hmm. Now then, which hole shall we tackle first? Let's give the short hole a try. Oh dear, that's going to be a tough shot. A spectacular shot, ladies and gentlemen. Spectacularly bad, that is, straight into the sewer. Another stroke of misfortune for the underdog Wallace. Nothing for it but to take the plunge, eh, lad? Not exactly a picnic in the garden, but at least it's dry down here, eh, Chuck? Uh, now to locate the ball and chip it back out. Shouldn't be too difficult, a uh, task. Oh, dear. It isn't right, I say. Mr. Paneer spends all his time announcing about Duncan, when Wallace is just as important. Almost. It isn't right, I say.
No progress on the golfing front, I'm afraid. Uh, looking for a ball in this mushroom patch is like looking for a needle in the proverbial. How's Duncan doing? Uh, haven't a clue, old chum. Gromit, old chum, I've got to admit it. I'm in the rough and no mistake. And we're back, broadcasting live from the Prickly Thicket Chairman's Tournament here at beautiful 62 West Wallaby Street. If you're just joining us, I'm Mr. Panier. And I'm here with top-seated player Duncan McBiscuit. We're on the green of the 18th hole. At least, uh, we think this is the green for the 18th hole. To be honest, we're having a right old to-do trying to find the actual hole. Are you positive this is the spot? Well, I copied me notes straight from the old deed. Thirteen lengths southwest of the tree, it says. Maybe you're measuring with the wrong club. There's only one official prickly thicket measuring club, and this is it. <coughs> yes, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. The thrilling finale to a thrilling contest. Stay tuned and you won't want to miss a moment of the drama. Oh, listeners, it isn't over yet. Not till the ball goes into the cup. Here at the end of the 18th hole. We've got the ball, but there is the cup. That's the burning question this afternoon. A question our own Duncan McBiscuit would give his best chipping wedge to answer. Please, Gromit, don't put in on me broadcast. Mushrooms? There, there, my dear. Oh, it's only Gromit. <laughs> if only you could reason with him, Gromit. But how could you? You're just a dull animal. He'll find golf is a deadly addiction. An affliction that will lead him to a dark and terrible place. But when he finally hits rock bottom, I shall run to his side. You've the patience of a saint, my dear. Thank you, Great Aunt Prudence. Has it happened? Has poor Wallace been ruined by golf? I can't bear this wait much longer. Patience, Felicity. Perhaps I could turn the radio on, just for a moment. Restrain yourself. <laughs> yes, ladies and gents, this could be it. We could be on the verge of the game-winning pot. If only Chairman McBiscuit can find the hole. Turn that off! Duncan McBiscuit! He's one of them too! They're all the same, my dear. <laughs> McBiscuit is the reigning champion and long-time chairman of the Prickly Thicket Country Club. But can he defend his title against Challenger Wallace? Up until now, McBiscuit has left his rival in the dust. But his game seems to have deserted him here, at the end of the course. Or oh, is it the course that has deserted him? Keep listening to find out. How's Wallace doing? He's at about... He just... Uh, that's a good question. I'd better check on Wallace. Me listeners won't want to miss anything important. There, 
there, my dear. Oh, it's only Gromit. There he is, and there's no polite way to say this, down in the sewer, flailing about with his clubs in the filth. And they called him the Rookie of the Year. Who would have thought Wallace would end up down there? Mercy! It's happened. Just as I said it would. He's finally hit rock bottom. And only I can save him. His angel of mercy. I'm coming, my poor, addle-headed, perfect fool. What a tournament it's been. What a contest. Up and down, up and down. And of course, all the ups has been Duncan, and all the downs has been Wallace's. Who knew he could fall as low as this? Stuck. There's no polite word for it. In a sewer. Flailing helplessly as the tide rises about his ears. He's truly sunk as far as he can possibly go. This is true golfing drama, ladies and gents. You won't want to miss a moment of it. Oh, there you are, Gromit. You're no luck down here, I'm afraid. If only these pesky mushrooms hadn't... Wallace! It's fled. So it's true. You finally hit rock bottom. As great a prudence said you would. It had to happen, I know, but oh, so quickly. No matter, your angel of mercy has come for you. I will lift you from this place of degradation back into the light. I'll wipe your burning brow and nurse you back to health. I'll surround you with flowers and music and mushrooms. Ah! Out of here! Get me out of here! Oh, you poor thing, you've had a fright. Everywhere! Everywhere! Come up to the flat, love. I'll fix you a nice cup of tea. I'm not sure I know what to make of that, lad. Do you? Brassy shot, you think? No, not a brassy shot. Ah, this trusty clique won't let me down. Till now. The Baffy can always give it a go. Not a baffy shot, this. The whiffy? Why not? Tricky shot, really. Of course, a battering buster peel. Frustrating this. Lofting iron, perchance. Not enough lift in the lofting iron. Hmm. Jeez, Wedge, do you think? Much 
much obliged. But that's the clock with the Ganges crib. I'll try anything in a pinch. That's centered in the right direction, at least. Too bad about gravity. Hmm. Golfa Valis. Down there in the sewer. Taking stroke after stroke. Rack, rack, rack. Please, Gromit, don't put in on the broadcast. And while you're down here, you may want to swing by Paneer's Produce, catering to the vegetable needs of the greater metropolitan area for over 25 years. You may want to experience the friendly atmosphere, the swift and efficient service provided by Mr. Paneer. Or you may want to experience the low, low prices. But you can't, because Paneer's produce has been blinking well shut down by an over-officious officer of the law. This so-called public guardian has slapped a punishing fine on poor Mr. Paneer. And for what? A squirrel. A tiny little squirrel loose in his shop, bothering nobody. I urge each and every one of my listeners to protest at this miscarriage of justice. And now, back to the game. Uh, now, which club to use? Uh, oh, what do you think, lad? It's in the cup, ladies and gents. Valis has sunk his ball. Bringing his score down to just... Let me see... 198 to 213... 235 over par. But the tournament ain't over yet. You know, Gromit, I think I'm starting to get the hang of this game. I'll take the controls now, lad. Take a good strong club to get me all the way to West Wallaby Street. Which one to choose? Here comes Wallace, the keen as mustard challenger, hot on the heels of our champion. The action is becoming fast and furious here at 62 West Wallaby Street. Uh, relatively speaking, that is, for our current champion is intently digging, digging away to find that elusive 18th hole and the ultimate prize. And Wallace? Well, I'm not right certain what our Wallace is up to. How's Wallace doing? He's at about... He just... Uh, that's a good question. I'd better check on Wallace. Me listeners won't want to miss anything important. Now, which club to use? Oh, what do you think, lad? And he's still pondering. A D 
tense moment, ladies and gents. He's got a lot riding on this shot as well as. A mood of expectation grips the crowd. Ah, me blistering iron. Let me try that once more. Oh, bad luck. A mighty swing, but the ball has bounced right back to the tee. What are the odds? It'll take a good strong club to get me all the way to West Wallaby Street. Which one to choose? Stick. Club to use. Uh, what do you think, lad? At some point, the deliberations must end, and a choice must be made. Perhaps Wallace will plump for a mashie. But will it be a driving mashie, or a lofting mashie, or a putting cleek, or a clapper, or a brass club, or a play club? It's a decision of great magnitude, and Wallace is certainly taking his time. Let's try the bouncing rod. Oh dear. Here now. This would be yours, I presume. Depositing non-postal material in Her Majesty's post boxes against the law, I'll have you know. See, it doesn't happen again. It'll take a good strong club to get me all the way to West Wallaby Street. Which one to choose? Whatever did she run off to? Now, which club to use? Uh, what do you think, lad? Ah, so, uh, have I mentioned it's a beautiful day here in the town centre where the prickly thicket champions tournament is winding down to the final holes? Uh, and what a tournament it's been, let me tell you. A veritable battle of the titans, you might call it. Only one of the titans seems to have let the occasion get to him. In fact, he seems paralyzed by indecision, to tell the truth. But at least he's still standing, ah, huh, Wallace? Standing like a blinking statue, if you ask me. Staring at his clubs, pondering, pondering. Or oh, waiting for inspiration to strike him on the noggin. Lofting iron, perchance? Pity the flag isn't in the post box, eh, Gromit? Ooh. What 
to play the ball from where it lies, I reckon. Wallace is on the move. Things are really warming up under a low light here at the Prickly Thicket Chairman's Tournament. Oi, Gromit! Any sign of the ball yet, lad? This ball! Oh no! This hallway ain't big enough for the both of us! You didn't see that! And neither did you! See what? And here comes Wallace! You're not taking this measuring club! Not till I've found the hole and sunk my butt! Found the ball, lad. Now, uh, which club to use? It'd help if I knew where the hole was. He appears to be. Yes, ladies and gents, Wallace is having a dither. Once again, he can't seem to make up his mind over which club to use on his ball. And if there's one area in which our Wallace has been ahead of the competition all afternoon, it's in the dithering stakes. And he's still pondering. A tense moment, ladies and gents. He's got a lot riding on this shot as well as... A mood of expectation grips the crowd. Ah, Private! Thrilling game, what? Heart hasn't raced like this since the old days back in the trenches. Had some jolly putting contests down there, we did. Did you hear that, Private? What a fight! Who'd have thought golf was such a blood sport? Don't suppose you'd like to put a friendly wager on the game? Quite right. Gambling's a beastly habit. No distractions, please. This is the moment of truth. And here comes Wallace, the keen as mustard challenger, hot on the heels of our champion. The action is becoming fast and furious here at 62 West Wallaby Street. Uh, relatively speaking, that is. Uh, now, which club to use? Uh, oh, what do you think, lad? Appears to be. Yes, ladies and gents, Wallace is having a dither. Once again. Ah, me joke book. Oh, this is a good one. I say, I say, I say. Might surprise you to hear it, but I'm a scratch golfer and all. You? A scratch golfer? That's right. I write down all me good scores and scratch off all the bad ones. And scratch off all the bad ones! <laughs> Again? Don't mind if I do. I say, I say, I say. I got a new set of golf clubs for me wife the other day. Thought it were a pretty good trade, myself. 
Sorted! <laughs> A pretty good trade! <laughs> Time again. I say, I say, I say. Two ants are in a sand trap, watching a duffer flailing away. Quick, says one to the other, get on the ball before he kills us. Get on the ball before he kills us! <laughs> What are you up to, lad? Blinky and Nora, the 18th hole! That do something from it. Now, which club to use? Oh, what do you think, lad? Another try? All right. Indeed it is. The long reign of Duncan McBiscuit has come to an end. All, All hail, hail Chairman, Chairman Wallace. Wallace! Oh, uh, uh, no need to make a fuss on my account. Oh, but there is, Wallace. Heard the entire game on the wireless. This is a new beginning for Prickly Thicket. Aye, an era of peace and goodwill and justice for all. Right, Wallace? Uh, well, uh, that is, uh, yes, uh, I certainly hope so. Uh, as Gromit will attest, I've always been very Gromit. No dogs allowed in the club, lad. You'll have to wait outside. Now, for my first official act as chairman... Three trumpets for all? 
Uh, no, Major Crumb. My first official act will be to tear up old Roaring McBiscuit's deed and to save West Wallaby Street from the bulldozer. Yeah, of course. Jolly good. Jolly good. You carry on, Wallace. Where is he? Where is that wee Borgen bump watch? Uh, you mean Chairman Wallace? He's around the corner, tearing up the deed. He cannot do that! Oh, but he can. Tournament's over, and he won it fair and square. But you're forgetting about the sudden death round. Sudden death? Aye, the round where I make sure he meets a sudden death. Don't don't touch him! 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 Or you come in a garden, Grey Squirrel. And, as the offence took place on prickly thicket property, I've no choice but to... Uh... Knock it up, knock it down and bury the remains, and we're here to see you do your duty. That's right. Prickly thicket has caused quite enough trouble. Kindly point me to the chair. Well, that's it is too to say And that's what he's not got to say Who's been mucking about with the oscillating fan? It don't oscillate no more. Suppose I'd better join them. Miss anything important, have I? Well, uh, I haven't actually done anything yet. As you can see, we're packed like a pressure cooker full of sardines. And I wanted to discuss our options before... Disguise? Poppycock, are you a waffler or a leader, Wallace? Well, uh, uh, that is, I, uh, 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 uh. Wafflers waffle! Leaders act! It's a trap! Everything's under control. I'm sure there's a simple way to deactivate the lock. It's a sand trap. Uh, uh, no need to panic. Uh, uh, I have an idea. Uh, but to put it into effect, I'll need to shift over to the window. That's it. Move into striking range. Uh, uh, Major Crumb, could you slide into the empty space? Flanking maneuver, eh? Brilliant strategy. Now, uh, Miss Flit, if you could please move into... Next to you? A golf-playing fancy man who toyed with my Felicity's affections? Certainly not. But Aunt Prudence? A lady must preserve some standards of decorum. Uh, Constable Dibbins, if you can move over... I'll give the orders here, if you don't mind. And I'm ordering myself to move over. You realise, Mr. Paneer, we could have avoided this outcome if you'd have chose a different candidate for membership. You're in the club now, ain't you? Satisfied? Could you shift over a bit, Mrs. Gabberley? Oh, I'll have a go. Uh, now, Miss Flit, if you could simply shift your weight, uh... Really? Uh into the empty space. This is intolerable! Miss Flit, uh, I wonder if you could just wiggle over... Big pardon? Uh, into the empty space. Oh! 
Mr. Paneer, if you wouldn't mind sliding over. Like this? Pardon me, Mr. McBiscuit. Could you perhaps shift your weight over a bit? I'd like to shift my fist onto your hooter for getting us into this scrape. Dunk, please. All right, lassie, all right. Major Crumb? One step ahead of you, Wallace. Constable Gibbons? Perhaps I will. Perhaps I won't. Miss Flit, could you... Uh... <sighs> uh, hello, Felicity. Duncan? Why'd you do it, Felicity? Why'd you want to throw me over for an umpty like Wallace? I'm not interested in Wallace anymore. I'm not interested in any man who... golfs. I bet I'd have given it up for you, lassie. You would? Aye, from the moment you first brushed me off, I can't you were the one for me. I tried to put my feelings in a rhyme, but oh, I'm no good with words. Your eyes are as deep as the murkiest look. Your teeth are as straight as black blue rock. You remember it? Of course I did. Your eyes aren't too shabby either. <clears throat> now, Mr. Paneer, if you move over, I know. Mr. McBiscuit? Ah, oh, shit, you're giggy, I'm shifting. Mrs. Gabbley? Say no more, Pat. Hate to bring it up at a time like this, Mr. Paneer, but there is an outstanding balance on that pudding magazine. I can't reach my wallet at the moment, Mrs. Gabbley. Of course you can't, love. We can settle up later. Um, Miss Flint? What an impertinence! Ah, and here we are. Oh, much obliged, everyone. Now I can put my plan into effect.
What's taking you so long, lad? Lend a hand, lad, and shift up pull. Get us out of here! What's taking you so long, lad? Thanks, lad. Close friends are a fine thing, but that was a bit too close. Well, why people are so keen on country clubs is a mystery to me. Then you meant what you said in there about quitting Prickly Thicket? For you, my little sprig of healing. Uh, just terror. a second, Felicity. I don't oh, think I've been introduced to the so man. Romantic. Sand bath! Most invigorating! Cleans out the pores! Reminds me of the good old days in the Sahara! You know, Constable Divins, I hear on Grapevine, there may be another, uh, opening at Prickly Thicket. And I've heard a certain grocery shop may be reopening soon, too. <laughs> well, old chum, I'd say Golden Retrieval's first professional investigation has gone rather... <coughs> Wallace, this is rather awkward for me to say. I, I, I mean, I know your feelings about me. Oh, uh, you do? You see, in the heat of adversity, I've discovered that my heart belongs to another. Oh, uh, righto. So, please, don't say anything to prolong our agony. I must therefore return this to you. Aye, oh, heck, lad. That's two close shaves in one afternoon. I don't know about you, but I could murder a copper. Oops. Hang on, just a sec. Time for some cheese, methinks, Gromit. What do you fancy, lad? The Elmore Wensley Day.